Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are delighted that you can be here with us as we join in remembering those who have courageously served their country and sacrificed for the freedoms that we enjoy today. Remembering such valor gives us the confidence in the battles of today as we fight the many issues which are threats to peace in our society. Let us hold in our prayers veterans of war and their families, and also our uniform officers, including the police and the fire. This morning, we pray that this worship experience will be a blessing to you, and we gladly welcome you. Congratulations to all those celebrating a birthday, anniversary, or any other special occasion this week. May the abundance of the love of Christ fill all the days of your life. God bless you. To those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we offer our sincere condolences to you and pray that God's peace surround and support you during this period. The Methodist Church St. Lucia Circuit continues in prayer and fasting every Wednesday. A Zoom online prayer room for prayer meeting and prayer concerns has been organized every Wednesday from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Persons are free to join via meeting ID 868-7666-4627, passcode 35618. Circuit midweek service will be held at the Castries Chapel from 12 to 1 p.m. Please make every effort to attend as you are able. Bible study continues in all congregations at their usual times. Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols is organized for 27th November at 6 p.m. at the Castries Chapel, featuring Dr. David McCallan at the organ. Tickets are available at a cost of $25. The induction service of the superintendent minister by the district president, Bishop the Reverend Derek Richards, will be held on Tuesday, 29th November at 5 p.m. at the Castries Chapel. All members are invited to attend. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Please be reminded that your offerings, tithes, and donations can be deposited to the Republic Bank St. Lucia. Account number 9501000599919. Or visit the church office Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We acknowledge our preacher for today, Reverend Tinuku Smith. We thank God for him and await the word that he will bring us this morning. God's anointing we pray on his life and continued blessings upon him and his wife. May the grace and peace of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit abide with us all. Let us now ready ourselves for worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. I welcome you this morning to the Grosile Methodist Church where our service is being relayed to you from. Please join us in the call to worship. We gather to worship the one who crafted creation out of chaos. Our cries of joy join the anthems of the universe. We gather to lift our praise to God who gives us a voice. We bring the songs which have echoed in our hearts all week long. We gather to remember those who sacrifice their lives for our betterment. We worship God in our act of remembrance. We gather as the children of God, our joy unbroken in God's love, young and old, tone deaf and perfect pitch, Lift the new songs of faith. Today, we remember our veterans and as we celebrate Remembrance Day. And our first hymn 
is in honor of those who served in the wars past and those who have, are no longer with us. Our opening hymn is hymn number 527, O God, our help in ages past. you to join us in our prayers of adoration, confession, and thanksgiving. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we come into your house of worship this morning to praise you, to adore you, to tell you how magnificent you are, Heavenly Father, to tell you that you're the one and only true God, and you're the one, Heavenly Father, who created this universe for us to live and enjoy. Gracious God, as we gather into your, in your house this morning, Heavenly Father, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to guide and direct our paths. We ask you, Lord, to guide and direct all those who gather this morning to praise you and worship you. May you open our eyes, Heavenly Father, to the paths that you want us to take, Heavenly Father. Gracious God, we wake, woke up this morning and we saw the beauty of the world all around us, the lovely sunshine, Heavenly Father. Over the past few days, you have blessed us with rain, which you have sent, Heavenly Father, to cleanse the atmosphere, to provide nourishment for the soils, Heavenly Father, and to provide water for us to drink. Gracious Lord, you're so powerful, you're so mighty, all-knowing, ever-present. And we bow before you, Heavenly Father, to tell you how great you are and how much, Heavenly Father, we love you. And we care for you, Heavenly Father, because you continue to show your grace and your mercy to us in so many ways. And as we offer our prayers of adoration, Lord, 
We come to you asking you to forgive us for the many sins that we continue to commit on a daily basis in thought and word and deed, the sins of the eyes, the sins of the mind, the sins of the heart, the sins, Heavenly Father, we commit knowingly and unknowingly, the sins of unforgiveness, the sins of envy, the sins of malice, the sins of jealousy, the sins of Heavenly Father, that they are so numerous that you cannot, we cannot mention them, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we ask you to forgive us for those sins which we openly confess to you and those that we have not confessed. We know that we have secret sins, Heavenly Father, and sometimes we're embarrassed to bring them to you, gracious God. But you know everything. And Lord, we take you that you will, you will agree, Heavenly Father, to forgive us as you promise if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all un unrighteousness. So Heavenly Father, we offer these prayers of confession to you. And as we offer these prayers of confession to you, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for our loved ones. We thank you for our church members. Lord, we thank you for those many blessings that you can continue to pour upon us in so many ways. We thank you for life in all its splendor, Heavenly Father. When we get up each morning and we can see and our senses are functioning, Lord, we have to thank you. And you take us through the day. And as we retire at the end of the day, Lord, you give us restful and peaceful night. Gracious God, there's so many things that we need to thank you for. But Lord, you know our hearts, you know our minds, you know how gracious and thankful we are for all you continue to do in our lives, Lord. We thank you for all you've done, all you're doing, and will continue to do in our lives. We offer all these prayers in no other name, but in the name of your Son and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now sing hymn number 210, We've Come This Far By Faith. It's hymn 210 in the Voices of Praise. Sing 
now turn to the ministry of the word, the collect for today. Eternal God, in whose perfect realm no sword is drawn, but the sword of justice and no strength known, but the strength of love, guide and inspire all who seek your kingdom, that peoples and nations may find their security in the love which casts out fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today, the first one comes from the Old Testament, 2 Samuel chapter 23, reading verses 13 to 17, and the epistle is from Romans chapter 8, 31 to 35, and 37 to 39. The Old Testament reading is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 13 through 17. Towards the beginning of the harvest, three of 30 chiefs went down to join David at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephraim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Then the three warriors broke through the camps of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and brought it to David. But he would not drink it. He poured it out to the Lord, for he said, the Lord forbid that I should do this. Can I drink the blood of the men who went at the risk of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. The three warriors did these things. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from Romans chapter 8. 31 to 35 and 37 to 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The reading of the Lord. Be to God. Our hymn of preparation is hymn number 254, Love Divine, All Love Excelling.
Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 15, reading verse 9 to 17. John 15, 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have, as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one lies for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of Christ. I now invite Reverend Smith to bring you the message. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, may the power of your word come alive in our lives as we listen attentively to you. We pray of the conviction, uh, convicting work of your Holy Spirit as it guides our thought, our meditations. We pray, O oh God, as we celebrate Remembrance Sunday, the sacrifice, the commitment, the valor, the life of those who have gone before us for the purpose of peace, security, justice, and we pray, O oh God, for their commitment, but we honor their memory as we continue on in life, bringing all this sacrifice as we worship you. May honor and glory be yours. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our great Redeemer. We pray in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. <clears throat> Today, we celebrate Remembrance Sunday, uh, joining most Commonwealth countries and also 
those who began this tradition after the First World War, in which uh, King George V began the observance of remembrance on 11, on the 11th hour, 11th day, or 11th month every year. And the Sunday closest is usually Remembrance Sunday. They invite us to reflect on the theme, a life of love is a life of sacrifice. A life of love is a life of sacrifice. We will use a story of Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 13 to 17, to expound on this important theme. In light of our battles each day, in a world that we continue to seek justice, continue to fight for justice and peace, and the solution to all of this is a life of love that is deeply rooted in persons who sacrifice their happiness, who sacrifice their well-being, and at times who sacrifice their own life for the betterment of others. Second Samuel chapter 23 verse 13 to 17 is centered in King David's last words, last testimony, as he shared his experience. And this scope of text is a story that is understood to have happened earlier in his life in which he was in a cave and he cried or longed for the water at Bethlehem. But Bethlehem was already occupied by the Philistines. And it took three persons who thought about their king and who risked their lives and broke through the enemy lines to retrieve this water and brought it back to King David. And the story reminds us that when he saw such commitment, when he saw such dedication, and when he saw them risking their life for the well-being and also for the need of their king, he took the water. Rather than drinking it, he poured it down on the ground as his worship and sacrifice to God. This is important because something, when we place this text in light of the wider context, David would have just subdued the rebellion of his son. Again, in chapter 20, one of the tribe of Benjamin began again a rebellion in which he again tried to subdue. And along the line, there is this cycle of those who were trying to tear down, those who were trying to resist, those who were trying to disturb the peace. But when it comes to chapter 23, David's last final words captured those who stood by him, those who sacrificed so much in their lives, to ensure the continuity of the leadership of King David and the prosperity of God's anointed king in a time when always there were always opposition from within his family, from within the people of Israel, and also from those outside, including the Philistines. But what begin and continue to hold together with the love of those who were the few who were able to sacrifice their happiness, their family, in order for them to continue in the kingdom. It is their sweat, it is their blood in which the kingdom of Israel was built on, was kept with security. It is an important reflection that when King David had this opportunity to quench his own thirst after all the risk of this man, he poured it out onto the ground as sacrifice to God. 
This is an important reflection in a time, brothers and sisters in Christ, when the demand of our Christian journey and our Christian life is selflessness in light of the world that is always selfish, thinking of itself. And you would even see in the cycle that David had to endure every time that he grew weary. I invite you to read 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 15. It highlights that again the Philistine began to attack Israel and David grew weary. How many of us, this battle that we continue to strive for the betterment of our family, for the betterment of our nation, for the betterment of the world, that we have grown weary, rebellion after rebellion, opposition after opposition, evil after evil in the midst of all. Even King David, the Bible highlights that he grew weary. And one would ever ask, he began with a war, he tried to subdue those who were in opposition to him, he tried his best to bring about peace, yet even as he grew closer, grow closer to the end, still the existence of the enemies, still the strife that the Bible records in 2 Samuel 21, 15, that this man, this king, grew weary. It just shows to us, even as we celebrate today, Remembrance Sunday, the sacrifices of those who have gone before us to keep world peace. Have we ever achieved world peace? Some has even said that after World War II, there seems to be more people killed each day because of war. We continue to fight. We continue on. Yet when we see all of our effort, all of our commitment seems to come to a waste that in the midst of our strive for better, for the betterment of and the peace of our nation, of our communities, evil seems to be on the rise. But all hope is not lost. Because if you follow the narrative in its totality, if you read uh, chapter 22 at the very end, defeated the defeat of four giants. I know that we know the story of David. He began with one giant. He defeat, it, bring him, it brought him to prominence. But near to the end, the narrative says that he was faced with four giants. Again, he defeated. But mind you, when you go into the first king, again, the rise of Adonijah, his son, rebellious against him, but never again in the Bible was mentioned after this narrative when he defeated these four giants were ever any mention of any other giant in the life of the people of Israel. It shows that even as he grew weary fighting the giants of his day, trying to establish peace, trying to offer, and as people supported him, committed their lives, although the cycle of violence, the cycle of war, seems to have triumphed, but after all the narratives of the Bible was fulfilled and done, we can never see a trace of any other giants that rose after David. So the message that uh, those who wrote and composed and put together intention to you and me when we commit our lives, even as we are weary, even if life seems to be impossible, even if evil seems to be triumphing, the commitment, the love, the sacrifice of God's people won't be gone unanswered. 
God is the one who sees. God is the one who recognizes. And one important thing that David did that day, when he saw the sacrifice of these three mighty warriors who were not named, when they brought him the water, he took the water and poured it as a sacrifice to God. Whatever we are doing, it is important that we as God's people the sacrifice and dedication and a life of love that we are called into is a life of sacrifice, that we sacrifice putting others first, putting the welfare of others first before our own, and bringing all that we sacrifice to honor God Almighty. As Friday was in a funeral preaching on the theme that uh, we must pursue usefulness more than happiness. A world will be a better place uh, if we do not seek alone happiness for our own selves. Rather, we see how useful our lives can be, how we can contribute to the betterment of our community, the rise of selfishness. Selfishness uh, is something that is slowly eating away our life as God's people, destroying community, destroying lives, uh, destroying nations, creating dictators, creating lives uh, that enforce war, the expense of peace. As we sit here today and meditate, for the sacrifice of our forefathers. Some of them left their families, went to Europe to fight in the First World War. Some of them left uh, our Caribbean communities. I know in our own island nation of Fiji, they have to la leave Fiji, travel months before going into the front lines, laying down their lives that their family at home can enjoy that their family and at home can experience peace. The question we ask is their sacrifice is in vain. The question that we ask, can we make sacrifices today that our children may enjoy prosperity and peace for tomorrow? A life of love is a life of sacrifice. And David in his last words and testimony, if you read chapter 23, he highlighted all the people who sacrificed, who stood by him when even all tribes of Israel would have gone against him. There were those who were the few who stood by him no matter what. And he brought this story in verse 13 to 17 to show how these three men sacrificed and yet, when it came to the time in which he could enjoy that nice cup of water to quench his thirst, he sacrificed that water for God's glory and honor alone. So many that is happening around us that demands and requires a life of love, a life of sacrifice. But brothers and sisters in Christ, a rebellious world we are living in. You would see even with our best efforts, we seem to be in a cycle that David said, David said in, in chapter 21 verse 15 that he was weary. But I, would, I draw to our attention as we end this reflection that there was one sacrifice we're not only remembering the sacrifice of those who have died in our wars and those who continue to seek, that they continue to fight for the betterment in our different countries and throughout the world. But the greatest sacrifice of all is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. As he poured out his own life for you and for me, that each day we are alive because of his grace and his mercy. And the epistle reading reminds us that who can ever separate us from the love of God that is ours in Jesus Christ. The sacrifice that was done at Calvary in which, 
in the book of John reminds us that from us, because of that sacrifice, we can become the living water from us, from our very wombs and bellies, the scripture writes, that can flow the living water that will bring about life in our family, in our community, and in the world today. A lot we seem to be reflecting on. In the air is the rise of crime. In the air is the rise of war around the world. In the air is the seeking of the soul of so many who are dying in their sin. Brothers and sisters in Christ, some of us may be going weary. Some of us may think that we are giving up. Some of us may be seeking our happiness. But David has signified, signified his own life to us. We can be few. We can be a few in numbers. But when we live out a life of love, we are going to sacrifice and put the needs of others before us, just as Jesus put our lives as most important to him, that no matter what we may go through, whether it's war, whether it's a sword, whether it's disease, whether it's violence, whether it's crime, Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Jesus Christ. So to us, as we motivate ourselves in the midst of all, if life may be a weary, if life may be a cycle of rebellion, if life may be a cycle of war and violence, for us as God's people, our hope is in a life of love in which each and every one of us, as we are deeply rooted in Christ, through the sacrifice that Christ has done, draws us to sacrifice our own happiness, sacrifice our own life, sacrifice our own comfortable lives, that we give it up for the betterment of so many people that are dying in the world today. I can never forget in one of the conversations, one did draw that in order maybe for the world to heal, some of us must be ready to get hurt. In order for the world to receive love, and some of us must be willing to sacrifice. The testimony and the life of those who have fought world wars, and those who continue to fight wars today, is a testimony that reminds us that they have given up so much that we may be living our lives in a, better, in, in a better environment and a situation here today. But as we remember them and remember the sacrifice, we can also contribute by thinking of others in which we can allow ourselves to be used to sacrifice what we may hold treasure as Christ himself sacrificed himself that others may be saved and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So it is my prayer as we celebrate today Remembrance Sunday. The action of David reminds us when these three men came back and gave him water, he took it and poured it out on the ground as a sacrifice to worship God. God may be asking you today, this morning, what you can sacrifice for the betterment of others? What can you sacrifice for the betterment of your family? What can you sacrifice for the betterment of the proclamation of the gospel? What can you sacrifice for the betterment of St. Lucia? What can you sacrifice for the betterment of the world? It takes a David to change. It takes a David to conquer giants. It takes a David to bring about a kingdom that is established on godly principle. The life of love is a life of sacrifice. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, it is my prayer that God will guide us in our reflection this morning as we remember those 
who have dedicated their lives, and also as we hold dear in remembrance the own dedication and sacrifice of Jesus Christ that calls each and every one of us to a life of love, to sacrifice for God. Now, as we meditate on God's word, we will hear, sing him 397, for the might of thy arm we bless thee. Brother Bertram to lead us in the prayer of intercession and Lord's Prayer, the final hymn and the benediction. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, as we gather in your house this morning, Lord, there's so many prayers that we need to offer through you for the many things that are going on in this world. Lord, we bring to you our Methodist Church. We bring to you, Lord, the president of our connection, Reverend Bich Gal Galbraith. We bring to you the president of our district, Bishop Richards. We bring to you our superintendent minister here in St. Lucia, Reverend Smith. We bring to you, Lord, all those whole offices in our church, our circuit stewards, our congregational stewards, our care fund stewards, and all those who have responsibility within our church, Lord. We pray for a revival in our church, Lord. We pray for a transformation in our church. We pray for each and every member in our church, Lord, that you will touch their hearts and minds so, Lord, they could go out and preach your word and seek disciples for you, Heavenly Father. Let us be more open-minded. Give us that boldness that we need to step out in faith and confidence, knowing, Heavenly Father, that you will give us the right words to say when we interact with others, gracious God. And Lord, we bring to you our youth. Lord, there are so many issues with our young people in St. Lucia, Lord. We see the violence going on on a daily basis. 
Lives are being lost uselessly, Ebony Father. We see the gang violence, Ebony Father. We see the rudeness. There's so many things going on among our youth, Ebony Father. But gracious God, we pray for your intervention in their lives. We pray particularly for their parents, Heavenly Father, that the parents should bring them up in the way that they should go, Heavenly Father. Give them that life, that grounding, that they will seek you, Heavenly Father, and the things that are yours. So very often, Heavenly Father, we allow the children to grow astray. But gracious God, we ask you to touch those people, those parents. Lord. May they be an example to their children, Heavenly Father. Lord, we bring to your island of St. Lucia, which is full of crime and violence and drugs and all the ills, Heavenly Father, there seem to be division, Lord. There's polarization among our people, Lord. There's hatred. There's so many things being spoken from time to time by individuals which do not show love. They do not show understanding, Heavenly Father. You've asked us to love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, and love our neighbors as ourselves. But Lord, we do not practice love. We do not show you love. So how can we show others love? So, Heavenly Father, we ask you to touch each and every individual in this island, especially those in authority, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to touch them in a special way, that they can seek you, so that you can give them the wisdom, wisdom to govern efficiently and effectively, govern in the interests of all concerned, Lord, and not just a few. Gracious God, this country needs you, Lord. There's so many things happening here on this island which are not of you, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick or afflicted. We ask you to lay your healing hands on them and give them the peace and the comfort that they need, Lord. There's so many people who are suffering in one way or another, Lord. So we pray, Lord, that you will touch them. We pray, Lord, for their caregivers. Those caregivers who make a sacrifice, perhaps spending more hours than they should take in care of the sick and the needy, Heavenly Father. We ask you to give them the peace and the comfort that they need. Bless them, O Heavenly Father. We bring to you, Lord, those who were affected by the floods last weekend. Heavenly Father, we don't know where the rains came from, but we saw the floods. And the number of persons who were affected in one way or another, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with them as they go through the cleanup process. We pray, Heavenly Father, that those who were not insured, that they will get some kind of support or assistance from in some form or another, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, that we will be more concerned about the areas around us, Lord, the drains that we do not use them as a place to dump refuse, Heavenly Father. This perhaps might have been the reason for that sudden flood. So gracious God, give us that understanding mind. Let us be more caring for our neighbors and those around us, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who have lost loved ones. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen them and hope and help them to cope with their loss. So often, Heavenly Father, people lose, lose loved ones suddenly, not only through illness, we lose, they lose others through violence, Heavenly Father. So we ask you to give them the peace and the comfort that they need, O oh gracious God. And Lord, we ask for world peace. At this moment, Lord, there's so many wars going on all over the world. Even as we commemorate Remembrance Day to Day, Heavenly Father, which should have signified the end of wars, but Heavenly Father, since the end of World War II, there are so many wars that have gone on. There's war going on almost on a daily basis all over the world, world, Lord. And we bring to you, particularly at this time, the war going on in Ukraine. Heavenly Father, we pray that you give those leaders a presence of mind to seek peace. To seek peace, Lord. There's too much war going on. The, the peace they must seek is your peace, Lord. Not the peace of war, but peace within, within themselves. The peace of the Holy Spirit that will guide and direct them, O oh, gracious God. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Heavenly Father, seeking your guidance for our lives. So often, we do not follow the path that you want us to take. We are not alert and attentive to your promptings. We're so engaged in the business and the material things of this world that we don't even bother to spend time with you. But Lord, we ask you to touch our hearts. Touch our hearts, Lord, so that we can return to you so that we can return to you, Heavenly Father, and we can guide us and direct us so that we could end up in eternity with you, gracious God. Heavenly Father, we offer all these prayers in and through your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 339, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, after which I will invite Reverend Smith to do the benediction. Christ, who walks on wounded feet, walk with you on the road. May the Christ, who serves with wounded hands, stretch out hands to serve. May the Christ, who loves with a wounded heart, open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Go now and bear fruit for God a fruit that will last. As Christ has loved you, so love one another and abide always in God's love, that your joy may be complete. And may God give you all you ask for in Christ's name. May Jesus Christ reveal to you God's way and call you his friends. And may the Holy Spirit confirm the truth within you and make your joy, make your joy complete. We go in peace and serve to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each and every one of us, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>